Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is US Family Videos. Once again, we welcome you to our website at uh, www.usmlvideos.net. Whenever you have time, we invite you to visit our website because we have posted hundreds of videos with uh, explanations on hundreds of points ranging from anatomy and biochemistry to infectious diseases, endocrinology, and almost every su subject you come across in this important examination. So take some time today to visit our website. Tonight I want to discuss this important topic, heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. It is simply thromb thrombocytopenia that occurs due to heparin. Now, you need to remember that heparin is a foreign substance to the body. And in our world, as we speak, most of the heparin we use in the United States now comes from China, where it is produced from the intestines of pigs. So, a substance that comes from the pig is not something natural to our body, it is a foreign thing. So this foreign substance is predisposed to produce allergic reactions in the human body. And these allergic reactions, they form antibodies, and antibodies, they combine with platelets and form thrombosis. Now, let us see First of all, the percentage of people who get hit, heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. In people who are treated with unfractionated heparin, the incidence is like 3%. Whereas in people treated with low molecular weight heparin like enoxaparin, the incidence is like 0.6%. And um, how is the pathological reaction propagates. First of all, IgG antibodies form to heparin platelet factor 4. And these complex, these antibodies, they bind to the platelets and activates them. And that activation leads to thrombocytopenia. So heparin platelet factor 4, take it on one side, and then IgG antibodies. These IgG antibodies formed against heparin platelet factor 4, they bind to platelets. They go and bind to platelets, activates platelets and leads to thrombocytopenia and thrombosis. So we need to remember that PF4 is an important thing. These are called PF4 antibodies and we need to send an ELISA for PF4 antibodies whenever we suspect HIT. That is the important diagnostic test we need to do. Now let us talk about symptoms and signs. Bleeding usually does not occur. You need to remember that point there won't be any bleeding in heat, but there will be thrombosis. Like 50% of patients with HIT will get thrombosis, and it could be in a arterial side or a venous side, but 50% develop thrombosis. And the usual time is five to 10 days after exposure to heparin. That is the time period, five to 10 days after exposure. But if the patient has previous exposure, it could be even between four days, one to four days of re-exposure. So that is the most important points about this uh, heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. Now let us talk about uh, treatment of this particular condition. Whenever you suspect heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, take away, stop the inciting factor, stop heparin immediately. Then, if you suspect thrombosis, for example, patient is complaining some pain in his legs, you should always do duplex ultrasound 
of lower extremities because a thrombosis might have occurred already. So you should always do duplex Doppler ultrasound of lower extremities whenever a patient who is on HIT, uh, sorry, on heparin complains of some kind of pain in his legs. And then due to substantial frequency of thrombosis among HIT patients, we should always start these patients on direct thrombin inhibitors. Direct thrombin inhibitors, there are two things you need to remember, ergotrobon and lepirudin. Ergotrobon or lepirudin, these are direct thrombin inhibitors. You start them immediately and then you monitor the platelet count. And when the platelet count reaches like 100,000 per microliter, you should start the patient on warfarin and maintain the patient on warfarin until you reach an INR rate between 2 and 3. And now, how long should you keep these patients on warfarin? If the patient has just HIT, you should keep them at least for 30 days on warfarin by monitoring their PT and INR. But if the patient has both HIT and thrombosis, you should keep the patient like three months. So those are the most important things. Let me recap the, uh, the management of HIT. First of all, stop heparin. Secondly, start on direct thrombin inhibitor like ergotrobon or lepirudin. And thirdly, start the patient on vitamin K antagonist warfarin and monitor their PT and INR. And the, the goal of PT and INR is between 2 and 3. That is important. In most of the world today, PT and INR patient has to go to the hospital, give his blood and check for PT and INR. But in some parts of the world like Germany or Netherlands, they are doing self-monitoring. Patient actually stays at home and uses a machine to read his or her own PT and INR. And now recently in the United States, Medicaid actually um, uh, it actually approved of uh, self-monitoring missions in the United States. So it's not widely used at this time as we speak in the United States, but the time will come probably by the time you start your residency. Everybody might be using a self-monitoring war for in PTINR mission. So this is coming. So HIT is an important thing. The lawyers are all over because HIT has serious consequences and you need to do everything to reduce the mortality because of HIT. So the main things you need to remember, it's uh, effect, it comes like 5 to 10 days and then how many people, 3% in um, unfractionated heparin and 0.6% in low molecular weight heparin. And what is the pathology? the IgM and IgG antibodies formed against heparin platelet PF4 factor. They bind to platelets and activate those platelets and ultimately lead to thrombocytopenia and thrombosis. And the symptoms and signs, there you do not see bleeding in these patients, but you see thrombosis in 50% of patients. So when you treat these patients, you should always stop heparin, then direct thrombin inhibitors like ergotrobin or lepirudin, then warfarin treatment for 30 days if the patient has only HIT and for three months if the patient has both HIT and thrombosis. Those are the most important points you need to remember when you talk about HIT. And uh, that is for tonight and visit our website when you have time at www.usmlevideos.net. That is www.usmlevideos.net. Thank you. God bless you.